Welcome back everybody to our next uh, NEO student update. Today we are joined by Dr. Jeff Birdsong, the chair of the Liberal Arts Department. And what we're going to do is kind of give an overview about uh, what a Liberal Arts Department actually is, uh, what courses and majors and programs are involved, and uh, kind of see if uh, a degree in Liberal Arts might be the right opportunity for you. So uh, Dr. Birdsong, first of all, could you just give us an overview of uh, what, what is the liberal arts department and kind of what is encompassed within that department? Well, we have a pretty broad scope at NEO and let me see if I can remember all the programs uh, and I might, you might need to help me out here <laughs> in case I uh, forget one. But we kind of have a combination of what you might find in some other places of social sciences, behavioral sciences. So we have the social science degree, uh, a lot of the areas for history, political science, um, uh, social studies. Then you would have uh, criminal justice. We have uh, early childhood education and child development. Uh, we have English, we have music. So that's where it starts to really broaden out in liberal arts, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, we combine at NEO. Uh, music has for both uh, music education and music performance. We also have art and we have uh, psychology and sociology and English. I believe I've covered those. <laughs> I, I, did you hear one that maybe wasn't in there? Oh. Sometimes I, I can uh, uh, lose track, but I think I got them all. <laughs> well, that, that, uh, the liberal arts department actually is the largest in scope yes. uh, of all the departments here at NEO. Yeah. Um, one thing that uh, you mentioned that I wanna kinda dig in on uh, real quick is uh, a lot of our pre-education uh, degrees and program options fall under the liberal arts department. Can you talk a little bit more about those? Do you mean specifically uh, pre-education? So uh, when you come to NEO with a two-year uh, two degree program, what kind of skills and what kind of preparations can you expect to receive oh, that okay. would transfer you to a, an education program so, at a four-year? Our general education right, requirements. Right. Okay, got gotcha. you. All right. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. Um, well, I th the way that I would look at really our areas for liberal arts, which I think prepares you in lots of other areas that we have here on campus, and uh, you know you can kind of divide up what we have here at NEO uh, b beyond just liberal arts for um, being prepared to go on to a four-year institution or going on to work. And so for most of liberal arts, it is to prepare people to go on to uh, a four-year institution. So that would cover then those areas that you can find in uh, other requirements that would be what we would consider your general education requirements. So your English, uh, some of the core social science classes, history, uh, American government, and then you can have also some uh, required electives, which oftentimes would be uh, psychology or sociology. We can also put speech into that category as a core class. So those would be uh, many of the core classes that almost every major would be covering. And so, uh, like, like you said, the most every student who comes through NEO is going to step foot in a liberal, a liberal arts course at some point oh, during I, their time. I can't think of a student that wouldn't, yeah. And uh, obviously uh, many institutions around the nation and especially institutions in Oklahoma understand and, and value those, those general education requirements. Uh, for you as an educator for, uh, at NEO for the past three decades, what is the value of a liberal arts, uh, liberal arts background in these liberal arts courses to you? Well, I think increasingly it's always been a case that communication becomes extremely important and communication is rooted in most of the classes, really all the classes that we have in liberal arts. I mean, you think about it, I mean, the core area would be um, something like English. So if you have the ability to communicate either through the written word or the spoken word, and really both, uh, just your ability to be able to convey a message to someone else uh, that's always going to be a strong point in almost any type of job. Uh, we can just see how communication becomes so important. Uh, even, let's just take criminal justice. So there could be people who are approaching criminal justice thinking, 
want to be a police officer, who knows, maybe they've really been caught up with some sort of law enforcement program on television, who knows, and really gets them all fired up. But some of my, one of my former colleagues has pointed out that if you're a police officer and you cannot write your, report, your reports well, then the cases will be thrown out in court. So the importance there of communication is, is rooted in that major and really in all the areas of liberal arts. Uh, beyond that, so you have communication, which I think would be a key. And then you also have the area of just understanding and studying people. So in some ways you can look at that as empathy. And uh, that is really a key part in so many different areas of life. So do you understand other people? Do you understand what someone else might be going through? Do you understand why they're reacting the way they are? And are you then prepared in some ways on how to deal with that? And I think that uh, liberal arts can certainly help you to do that. So in the areas, let's, you know, early childhood education, for example, how to understand how to deal with children in that case. And I think it's, it's important to highlight that the, the communication and empathy understanding of people especially when you consider that these general education requirements are required for almost every degree on campus. Correct. So even if you're going to get a degree in nursing, uh, you're going to require some of these background classes in liberal arts. So you, if you're uh, a nurse and you're interacting with your patients, you still need to know how to communicate. Sure. You yeah. still have to, need to know how to re write these reports. Mm -hmm. um, and, and many of our many of those programs are geared toward uh, transfer to a four-year institution, mm -hmm. English, so, uh, social science, things right. like that. Uh, but there are also some programs that are designed uh, for direct entry into the workforce, uh, like criminal justice. Criminal Can you justice, talk about that? Criminal justice is probably the best example. Uh, where that fits in is if someone is wanting to, I can think of one example of a former student here at NEO, but I know that there's been actually more than that. Uh, that were, went through the criminal justice program, got the two-year degree, uh, turned 21, went into the highway patrol program. And uh, Oklahoma Highway Patrol requires that you have at least an associate's degree. Mm -hmm. And there are many um, police forces or highway patrol departments across the state and the country that would require at least a two-year degree. Uh, some actually require a bachelor's degree, but uh, you know we can help get you prepared for uh, going into the law enforcement um, academy by getting your your two year degree here. And one of the more recent uh, additions into the liberal arts program was uh, uh, taking the performing arts and placing that under that umbrella. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what what makes NEO's performing arts or um, artistic courses, uh, what, what has, lets them stand above other institutions in, in your mind? Well, the key part is that um, you're going to stay active if you're in the music program here at NEO. There's, there's a lot for you to do, and uh, I think that's great. You want to be in a situation where for both vocal and instrumental, uh, they're good enough that people call them to do things. So, right, you know, it's one of those situations where if they weren't busy, then you're going, what's going on here? Because apparently no one wants them to be at a performance. That's not the case for, for both vocal and instrumental. They're active, they're very busy, and they should be because they're both very good. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're, going to, they're both uh, Dr. Taylor and Mr. Compton, uh, they get the phone calls and ask to, to go to certain events, and they have to sometimes turn down events because they have a very busy schedule. So in that case where maybe you are, if you went to a four-year institution, you would have some opportunities to perform. I don't think you would have as many. And so here you can start off, you can get to um, get on the stage and, and, and get a significant part. Beyond that also, I think what we're seeing, and, and I think our areas, because we see an emphasis on music education and how that blends in, with performance as well is, uh, and this is beyond NEO, but we're, we're starting to see some really interesting combinations of different programs such as psychology and music. So you have music therapy. Right. And I believe that's going to be, uh, that's the wave of the future. Uh, 
-hmm. a very important area and um, I, I would think that we would have plenty of students out there that would be interested in that. And one of the benefits of uh, the liberal arts program or the, the department being so broad is that uh, one of the largest degree uh, segments that we have are people in a general education uh, program. They don't necessarily mm -hmm. yeah. know exactly what they want to do for a career or where they want to go after an EO. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's the benefit of taking classes within the liberal arts department uh, as they decide what they want to do? Well, I think a liberal arts background um, gets you prepared again for those areas of communication and then understanding how you navigate within a job and uh, working with other people on the job, how you might then be able to solve problems, that becomes very important. You have uh, just really a kind of a catalog that you can rely upon. Why do people react a certain way? What kind of historical comparisons might one event lead to something else? And that, uh, again, through the area of understanding people, communication, you're putting yourself in a better situation to be able to solve problems. That's always very important. But I would say with a general education degree, uh, what I always, first off, if someone's coming to college, they want to do well in college, and they don't necessarily know what they want to major in, they're certainly not, in fact, it's actually, I would, I would say, recommended to go to general education. And above all else, I believe that what you ought to be doing when you're in college is, is doing the best you can to excel, to make the best grades that you possibly can in whatever classes that you're in. And so even if that means that you end up with a particular degree that at first doesn't necessarily connect to a particular job that you're seeking, I mean, some things you have to have some classes, and if you don't have them, you just don't really fit for that job. But in a lot of other areas, if it's just simply, if it's able to say to an employer, this is a person that can really find ways to succeed, that can work and can accomplish goals. So if, if you say, look, this is what I really enjoy studying, if it's psychology, let's say, then excel in psychology. Mm -hmm. And if you end up getting a job in business, then the people that would hire you say this individual knows how to accomplish goals right. and that's extremely important. I always point out he's now retired and I, his name escapes me right offhand but uh, the former CEO of Goldman Sachs was a history major and he would say time and again that his job in the stock market understanding companies where to invest where not to invest um, he relied heavily on his background in history and just looking at key events in history that helped him think about what companies are prepared to succeed and which ones aren't. And as uh, some careers become more specialized within the industry, uh, many people will learn those skills on the job. Mm -hmm. It's getting the job yeah. uh, that is uh, kind of their entry point. Right. And, and like you said, having that broad background and understanding and the ways to communicate can be very helpful. Right. So if uh, students think they might be interested in either a liberal arts program or uh, they know that they need to take classes within the liberal arts department, where can they go to find that information? Uh, they, can, they can give me a call. I'll probably be the best way. I'll, I'll be here. I'm, I'm planning on being here most of the summer. Mm -hmm. So 918-540-6348. Uh, or you can email me, jbirdsong at neo.edu. Thank you. And is there anything else you'd like to add? Again, I just really would emphasize that. It's a, you know, it's, it's a challenging time any, in any situation when you're leaving high school or you're going back into college and um, you, you're trying to figure out what you want to do. Uh, I, I really do want to emphasize find what you enjoy and excel at that. Absolutely. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, like Dr. Birdsong said, a lot of the times it's not necessarily the exact program you're in, but it's the skills that you're building within that program. Be sure to uh, check out the links in the description to find information on the liberal arts department, and uh, we'll join you next time. Thank you. Bye.